right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up Show. I'm your host, Mr. BJ Matthews, a.k.a. B. Jizzle. For those who have not already, go and look at my last video with Chris Copeland, former NBA player, as well as check out my Sunday videos with my host, Rick Masters, my co-host. We present every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So right now, this is probably going to be one of the most, I would say, impactful interviews that I do. Because the person on the other side of this camera is somebody that I know personally, uh, have a relationship with, a bond with. Um, Top-notch basketball player, played at every level you could think of. Played against anybody else you could think of. Um, high caliber dude. And, you know, just, you know, blessed to have him in my life. We're going to welcome Mr. Travis Garrison to the pull-up show. How you doing, bro? What's going on, man? How you doing, man? How's everything? Oh, man, I can't call it. How's the family? How's the kids? Man, everybody's good, man. Kids trying to kill me, trying to give me a heart attack. But, everything, you know, everything is everything, you know, enjoying the whole process, man, and Enjoying and spending time with them, so everything is good, man. So how uh, how old are your kids? You had a daughter, son. How how old are your kids? Yes, yeah, so I have a uh, a daughter that's eight. My son is eleven, and uh, my ex wife and I, man, we took in um, her uh, half brother when he was two. He's fifteen now, but I still raise him as my son. So so yeah, man. Yeah, so I got three, man. Right, right, right. How's the uh, corona up there? Where you at right now? Uh, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's crazy everywhere, as you can expect, man. Um, you know, just just everybody trying to deal with it how they can, man, and continue to maneuver. And you know, it's just all about adapting to the the, the new norm, I should say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, bro. So let's just get it popping. Um, little icebreaker, man. First off, uh, let's tell the audience where you're from, and also, um how you grew up and in the environment that you grew up and stuff like that. Kind of give the audience a little re recap on that. Oh, yeah, nah. Um, so I grew up in Sula, Maryland, um, raised by a single parent mom. I mean, my dad's in my life as well. But, you know, my mom, I lived with my mom, my two older brothers. Um, they both play basketball. Um, they like six and nine years older than I am. Obviously, you know, man, you know, being the youngest, you know, you want to do everything that the older siblings do. So, um, so that yeah, man. So like I said, you know, just trying to follow in their footsteps, and you know, they 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 didn't, they didn't take it easy on me. You know, what I mean, they didn't take it easy on me, man. And it was a, it was a it was a grind, but you know, um, they pushed me to be who I am today. Yes, sir. And and some of the, the people that grew up in that DMV um, area, you know, Steve Francis, Kevin Durant, Quinn Cook. Um, so many hoopers coming out that DMV uh, area, man. So the environment. What do you? Why do? You, what you think? Why it makes it so such a basketball community over there in the DMV? Um, because they don't care who you are. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care who you are. They don't care who you rank. They don't care. I mean, if anything, that's gonna, that's gonna make them go at you even harder. Um, and everybody's competitive, man. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to be uh, better than the next person. Um, it's just a competitive situation, you know. It's it's. Like I said, man, I know you saw the Quinn Cook uh, interview, man, when they said it's in the water. Um, and, and that's true, man. Everybody everybody is, is hungry, man. Everybody wants to get it, and everybody pushes each other. So whether it's they like you or not, man, it's, it's just it's just, it's just just uh, an all-around ground, a grind. That's why, you know, you see a lot of successful basketball players, KD, you know, Quinn Cook, uh, those guys that's in the NBA right now, man. Um, that's what it is, man. It's it's it's, 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 it's it's, it's everybody got everybody trying to eat pretty much everybody trying to everybody eat, trying man. To eat. everybody's trying to eat man so it's like man, it's a grind bro that's why area has uh, uh one of the most successful uh basketball players in, in in the world man you know so i feel it so um first of all when did you start hooping when did you start growing up to play the game of basketball and how did it become a part of your life and what, what um you got real serious uh, that's a good. That's a good question. Man. I started. I started playing basketball at eight years old. Man, my mom was like, you know, give it a try. You know, I was like, all right. And my oldest, like I said, my oldest brothers, my older brothers played, but I didn't care for that stuff, man. My brothers used to have games, man. I used to be in the in the stands, man, playing with action figures and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Um. So I ain't take it. I ain't, man. I ain't really care too much about it. But 
I started playing at eight, but I fell in love with the game at like at 10, 11, though. Like I literally, I, I used to, I used to literally go to the court, man. Like I wake up in the morning, especially during the summertime. I wake up in the morning, man, wash my face, eat a bowl of cereal, and run up to the court. I remember my brother used to jump rope, and um, he used to dribble up to the court with his all pan. So I started doing stuff like that, man. Or if it was like super hot outside, I go to the court and just like do drills and stuff like that by myself, and then I go back and get my friends, go back to the court and hoop, and I go back again. So I used to go to the court. My friends used to make fun of me now, man, because I used to uh. I would uh, and I would go take about three showers, man, during the summertime. Cause I go to the court like at least four times a day, man. Like I said, early in the morning by myself. I go get my boys. We go hoop, and then um, I come back. The older guys would be up there, so I stayed at the court. Um, and, and I'm rain was it was raining. My boy had a, a hoop in the backyard, man. He had a flood back then, still back there, just shooting. You know, like man, um, where it's like you get that hunger. Like for me, I used to watch Come Fly with Me and. Like Michael Jordan had this uh, this cassette uh, set, man. It was like "Come Fly with Me," uh, "Air Up There," and some other stuff, man. So I used to uh, <clears throat> I used to watch that old stuff, and I'd go up to the court, bro. Then I remember one time, man, it was snowing outside. I took the shovel down to the, to the court, shovel up some snow, and it's just it's just like shoot, man, and stuff like that. So, man, that's when I was like, man, I wake up that 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 you know when you're passionate about something, bro, and yep. you just get that bur- get that burning feeling inside you every time. So that's how it was with basketball. Around 2011, man, it was a wrap after that. Do you feel so a little bit off topic? Do you feel the kids today, like the people in high school and college, have the same passion? Because you brought that up as what you guys had in your time. Do you think it's a little bit more different? Social media, man. Social media kind of watered everything down. That's that's my opinion. I think that um a lot of kids, man, you got kids that's getting ranked like in what fourth, third, fifth grade and stuff like that. All type of crazy stuff, man. It's yeah. it's crazy, man. It's just it's just it's, it's a lot. Um, I just, like I said, I think a lot of things watered down. You got the mixtapes and you got stuff like that, which is good. I mean, some because it, it gets you, it gets you, it expands you out further than your area. So it's, I think it's good, but I also think it's I'm not a fan of it. But it's like it's different areas. So you have those guys that talk about their areas and when they grew, when they grew up and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know, man. I I just think like I said, man, I think that um. Uh, that the 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 social media thing kind of like water things down a little bit for the, right. the hoopers, man. That's 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 just my opinion, you know. Right. So so going into that, um, you start hooping. Uh, what was the scene like? Did you start playing AAU ball, summer ball, travel ball? Um, how'd you get your feet wet inside the you know basketball market? Um. Man, one time I was in the I was at uh, in middle school. Like me and KD, we all went to the same middle school, Drew Freeman. And I remember being in the gym one day, man. And my AAU coach came in there and he showed me like a magazine. And I was like ranked number two in the eighth grade in the country. Mm-hmm. And I and before that, I didn't know anything about I didn't know anything about rankings or anything like that. And that was the first time I got introduced to like the being on the national stage. So I didn't even know what it meant, man. Um, honestly, I didn't care. I just loved playing the game. Um, so yeah, that's that's when I really got introduced to like that 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 world, and it was different. Like I said, man, you have I mean, rankings is a big thing to people. I mean, I, for me, I was like, I'm just I'm just hooping. I'm just playing the game I love with with the passion that I love, man. So I didn't really care about that stuff. You know, other people care a lot about that stuff and they live for it, but me, it was more so just going out there and hooping. You know. So you said the number two. Hooper, so you t- you're not talking about just DC or Maryland, you talk about in the country. In the country, like I was, I forgot who was, I think, um, I forget the guy named that was number one, man. Um, I forget who was number one, but I was number two. Yep, I was number two, man. I was number two in the country. Uh, number yeah. two in the country. Wow, so what's your what what I know your game is like, but how is your game? How would you describe your game? What is it like? Do you compare it to any other player, or do you have your own style? Um, I use a, Chris Webber. I was a big fan of. I mean, I like Chris Webber. I, I thought I, people used to try to compare my game to his or like uh, I don't know. Man, I grew up as a KG fan, but obviously I'm not seven feet, and you know he plays a little different than I do. Um, but Chris Webber, I think I think probably more so Chris Webber. Everybody was like more so that comparison or thinking of like that. He could shoot it some, and he could shoot it, and you know. I, he's an at, at, athletic uh, man, so probably Chris Webber, I would say. So you, so growing up around KD, so did you, did you, and everybody else knew he was going to be what he is today? 
Um, honestly, music is so crazy, man. You know, um, I remember his dad like bringing him to the gym one time uh, during AAU. He was young, like he's much younger than I am, but uh, we weren't paying no attention. Um, he was tall. He was always kind of tall and lanky. Um, and then when I was at Maryland, that's when you, you know you hear people saying, you know, K- Kitty, Kitty. I'm like, who do they keep talking about, man? And next thing I see him, I'm like, I see him at Texas. Yeah. Um, and and that's when that's when I was like, man, that's crazy. But you know the crazy thing about it, you know, we cousins. I found out we was yeah. cousins, so we, so I, we, we. I was I was gonna say that myself, but I'm gonna let you say it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, nah. So yeah, so it was crazy. My, we had the, my, my cousins at the family reunion, and um, he took a picture like, yo, look who's here. And it's, it's KD, like so we on my mom's side. So obviously it's, it's it's down the line, but yeah, man, we we family. Um, but we we grew up. We kind of grew up around each other. So it was like it wasn't. You know, what I mean, it wasn't it was a big love deal. anyway. Yeah, 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 but yeah, man, yeah. All right, so um, number two player um, in the eighth grade, come going into high school. Um, how was the process going into high school? What high school did you end up going to? Um, the process, man. I wanted to go to the school around my neighborhood, which was Sula High School. Um, my mom wasn't having it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be. I wanted to be with my friends. My neighborhood was getting rough around that time. Uh, she just wanted me to get away. Um, I looked at I looked at uh, Mercersburg, which is in Pennsylvania, um, and I wanted to go there. It was a it was a boarding school. It was like eighty five students total. Um, and I wanted to go there. I want, yeah, I wanted to go there, man. But I took like a, a test to try to get in, and I, I didn't pass, man. So they didn't let me in. And then I remember one day I was in the gym, and my uh, guidance counselor he came up to me. He was like, "Yo, you ever heard of a school called uh, the Math and Catholic High School?" I'm like, he showed me like a pamphlet. I'm like, man, I'm not even Catholic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, man, I never, I, I said I never heard of it, which is crazy because my oldest brother played at McNamara, which is a, a school that's in the WCC. So they used to play against them. But like I said, my brother's nine years older than I am. So um, I never paid attention to the games. Like I, I was in the hallways running around with my friends. So I didn't know about nothing about the math. And then he said it was an all-boys school. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, yo, he's bugging. <laughs> like, I'm not going to an all-boys school. Especially, I'm not Catholic. Especially, especially at that time, you ain't going to go to no all-boys school. Oh, man. I'm like, man, I'm trying to go with my boys. I'm trying to go with – they got girls at the high school up in Sulin. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to go there. Um, but I went to I went to go sit down um, with uh, my um, Demathas high school coach, uh, late grade uh, coach Morgan Wooten. Um, I went to go sit down with him, me, me and my mom. And after that meeting, man, my mom was like, "Yo, you going here?" You know, he's stressed. He's stressed on academics, character, and stuff like that. My mom loved it, so that's how I ended up at Demathas, man. You know, but before that, I didn't know anything about Demathas, which is crazy. You know, no, that's that's dope. So. For those who's listening in with the math, the, um, the math is a national powerhouse. I remember that school when I was in high school, you about six, seven years older than me. And I remember the mm-hmm. math was a top notch high school in the country. Like if you go there, like you're going to be a top ranked player. So for you to get that opportunity, what was it like playing at the math and going to school at the math? It was crazy. So I went on it. So they do shadows. I went on a shadow. I went on a visit, bro. <laughs> I'm walking in the hallways. I'm thinking I'm some. I'm six eight. I'm, I'm thinking I'm some, bro. I'm walking in the hallways, bro. It's seven foot four, six ten, six eight. Like I'm talking some big dudes. I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, hold on, man. Like, it was crazy, man. Then at the time when I went to go visit, they were they were number they were number one in the country. They were number one in the country at the time, and um. It was crazy, man. It's just, but it was like sitting in the classroom. Like I'm, a, I'm around a whole bunch of dudes. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, yo, I can't do this. I'm around a whole bunch of guys, man. So it bothered me at first, um, and then just just playing over gym with those dudes, man. And and you know, we had guys like Keith Bogans, Joe Forte. They was like top five in the country. Just them two. Right. Um, just being there, man, and playing over gym. I just, I, I was like I said, I was the number two grade in the country. Coming, going into the math, so I thought it was a big deal. But you go there, you got guys that's top five in the country is a senior. You have uh, the, the sophomore who's top 10, Joan Collins. You have a junior who's top 15, Andre Coll- like, So it was, it was, I was nothing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, was, I, was, I was nothing, man, compared to those guys. Um, and then open gym, man, just playing against those dudes, man, it was like a rude awakening. You know, like, 
they don't care who you are, the rankings and everything. You got the, all the top college coaches coming in uh, in the gym. Um, and like I said, man, I didn't grow up watching college basketball. I didn't watch, I didn't grow up watching college basketball, so I didn't know the history about a lot of colleges. Um, I, I learned it when I was at high school. I learned the right. history about a lot of schools when I was in high school, man, um, about the college coaches, the, the coaches, the teams, and things like that. It was like a crash course. Um, but it, it was cool, man, but it was like, man, eat or get eaten. That's that's how I was at the math, man. It was like, man, you're going to either work your butt off or you're going to get lost in the mix. Um, so that just made, it made me push to get better. It made me, it made me push to get better, man. And, um, it was a dope experience. Um, a lot of people think that at our high school, that everything is given because of who we are. Um, but man, we, we had to work our butts off, you know, um, for everything, for everything. I know I did for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man. So it was just. It's one of those things, man. It was, it was it was a dope experience. It was it was really cool, man. Like I said, playing for Coach Wooten, um, late great Coach Wooten, Hall of Fame coach. Um, one of the dudes who ne he never screamed at you, he never yelled at you, but his sarcasm was, man, my goodness, man, it was crazy. Man. Like, <laughs> it's, give me, hey, give hey, me, give me an example, bro. Give me an example. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like man, like bro, like one time. So KG, like I said, KG growing up, KG was like the. I was a huge fan of KG. So I wanted to do everything KG do, talking trash, yelling. And I remember we played against, I remember we played against McNamara. We played against a high school, bro, uh, McNamara. And we had that gym. I'm talking trash. I'm yelling, screaming. And we ended up losing that game. And um, <laughs> I got a tech. I remember getting a tech during the game. I got a technical for talking trash. And in the, in the, in the, in the locker room, man, he was like, man, you know, <clears throat> he was like, yeah, man, and guys out there want to wanna do all this talking, talking too much. Man, if you want to talk that much, what you just join the debate team? Like it was, it was like he's just he's like I said, bro. Like he was, he was the best at sarcasm. Like it was just it was equivalent to him yelling at you. You know what I mean? Like he was real sh sharp, man, sharp dude. I tell I tell people all the time, he's a man. He's a better person than the coach, bro. Like he was just a great human being, man. Just how he was and his character, and that's what he taught. That's what he talked about the most about character, man, and being a, a good person, and you know. um, just valuing yourself and in, in, in your family and stuff like that, you know, and God for sure. Right, right. So what so can you tell me a few play, players that you played up against at the Matha um that you enjoy playing against your toughest people that you played against at the Matha? Dang, bro. We played against some we played, we played against some dudes. Like we had Julius Hodge that played at NC State that played with the Nuggets for a while. Mm -hmm. Um Mel Carmelo. Me and Melo, we've been playing against each other since, like, so it's, it's you know, so crazy about Melo, bro. Like, I tell people all the story. I tell, tell kids the story all the time, man. Coming up my sophomore year, Melo was like short. He was like six, two. He was short, bro. Yeah, he was yeah. a guard. And he was top 100 going into our junior year. He was top 100 going to our junior year. Melo was top 100 going to our junior year. Man, that summer, all you heard was Carmelo Anthony, Carmelo Anthony. He grew six inches. Carmelo Anthony, Carmelo. Man, next, by the time the summer was over, bro, he was top. Five in the country, so that that summer, bro. One summer, man, and he was just a three years, bro. His junior year, senior year, his freshman year in college, bro. I tell kids all the time, man, like anything is possible. Dude was just was re relentless. He was just hungry, man, and he went after it. Um, so Melo was definitely uh, Jason Frazier, who played at um Villanova. He was tough. We played against. I played against him during the summer circuit, and then we ended up playing against each other during that school year. He was tough. Um, man, uh, you know who, was, who else was a dog, man? Uh, Derek Snowden. Hey, I see you on it too, D Snow. Hey, <laughs> hey, play the bit of no, hey, bro, real talk, man. Like, AI, that's 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 who I compared him to. That's why I, I looked at him as like, AI, AI like, man. Alan Iverson, yeah, he was he was he oh, was wicked, man. man. Hey, he was he he was he was he was he was tough, bro. Like, Derek Snowden played a bit of no, he got hurt. If he didn't get hurt, bro. If he didn't oh, get hurt, yo, real talk, man. If he didn't get hurt, bro, it would have been it would have been a problem. Been he was tough, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely, definitely. Um, I played with Billy Edelman, who played at a Syracuse who won a championship with Melo. He was tough too. Um, who else, man? High school, bro. I mean, I played against some tough dudes, bro. Eddie Griffin, who passed away, man. Rest in peace, man. Um. He he was tough too. I was talking trash to him. He wasn't he wasn't even saying nothing back to me. He was just giving me buckets. He wouldn't oh, he talk trash. 
Yeah. He really yeah. tucked trash, man. Yeah, man. It's I played against a lot of tough dudes. Mike Sweetney, who played at Oxen Hill, played at Georgetown, um, played with the Knicks for a while, played with Chicago. He was tough, man. It was, it was, a lot man, of dudes. It was, it was a lot of dudes, man. It was I had to go through a lot, bro. <laughs> I had to go through a lot, bro. I had to go through a lot, man. It was it wasn't easy, man. It wasn't easy for sure. So you you getting your your feet into the math of, when you started really becoming the man on campus was say probably your junior, your senior year, is that safe to say? Um I started getting my I started getting recognition probably like my sophomore year. Oh, sophomore so year. Probably like my sophomore year. I mean, I was top, I was always top 15, top 20 every year, like my freshman year through my senior year. Like I was always like top 20, 25. I was always like ranked high. Um yeah. But like this, in regards to like being like the math, like being that 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 new like that that dude, um, uh, yeah, probably my like sophomore year, man. I think I, I in the playoffs I did like I had like 20, 20 like twenty two or something like that in the playoffs in the semi. I think it was the semifinals or something. Um, and that's when and that's when I uh, that's when I got that's when I got on the map and people started really noticing who I was. Um, so yeah, man, that was probably like my sophomore year. Okay. Um, so you, your high, your high accolades, your senior, obviously McDonald's All-American, Jordan Classic. Tell me about that experience when you got those two accolades under your belt. Um, it was crazy, man. Cause like I said, bro, like going, going through that circuit, man, I didn't, so I was in summer school every summer. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to attend any camps during the summertime. I was in summer school every summer because I was, I never got the grades. Mm -hmm. um, so I never, I never was able to attend like ABCD, Nike, um, and I always get these invites. USA uh, basketball team, I get all these invites, but I never, I couldn't, I couldn't miss school and my coach didn't care. Um, so my, I, remember, I remember going to my senior year, I said I wanted to be a McDonald's All-American. I didn't care who my coach was or anything, bro. I was like, yeah, I got to put that work in. I want people to like, they hear my name, but I want them to recognize who I really am. And I remember going on that, uh, that summer circuit, man. I was trying to kill everybody. Um, I got invited to ABCD camp. I went to ABCD camp. That's where Lenny Cook and LeBron was going at it. That, that was that same year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the crazy thing about it, me and Melo, so me and Melo was on the same team. <laughs> Me and Melo was in a you, you and Melo really have like a, a strong bond with this basketball thing, huh? I mean, during that time, during that time, during that time, yeah, because we, we was always like number one and number two in the area. That was it was always like who's better. Yeah. Um, but like we went to like I said, me and Melo was on the same team. They was, they was trying to see who's better between him and the cook. And uh, our first game, bro. Me and Melo was on the same time, our first game. A dude, a dude went to work, bro. A dude <laughs> put on the show. So the, the 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 camp is like three days. It's a three day camp, I believe. Three day, three day camp. I want to say three day camp. Man, he he. The first game, he angle out. He killed any cup. And after that game, he left and went home. So he went there for one game and <laughs> rolled out. <laughs> but hey, hey, but he, hey, but hey, he, a hey, youngin killed killed the guy, man. Um, but that's when LeBron. That's when I found out about LeBron. Knew what LeBron was. Um, and he he really got his name. He killed I me. Mean, him and Lenny Cook was going at it too. Um, but that's that's that camp, man. I said, man, if I kill this joint, man, I gotta be solidified. I gotta be. I gotta. I gotta be in there. And I killed it, man. I killed it. It was crazy. I made the All Star game. I made the All Star game, but because I missed so many days of school already, summer school already. Yeah. I couldn't. Even, I couldn't even play in it. My coach said I gotta come back. So I couldn't oh. play in it, bro. Yeah. I couldn't even play in there, bro. Yeah, I was sick, man. I was sick. That, and that game was that game was crazy. Shabazz and Telfer, Kendrick Perkins. Um, it was crazy, bro. It was it was a lot of heavy hitters in that uh that year, man. I mean, doing that summer circuit. Yeah, yeah, man. So yeah, so I mean, once I once I got solidified, man, I got picked. It was it was a dope experience, man. You know, me, Chris Bosch. Um, and you know what's so crazy about that, bro? When I was at ABCD camp. What? Chris Bosch and a guy named Daniel Horton who played at uh, Michigan. They was mm. trying to recruit. They was trying to recruit me to go to Michigan, bro. Like that mm. whole ABC, that whole ABCD camp. They was trying to recruit me to go to Michigan. The whole time we was there, bro. Like, yo, let's go there, man. Tommy Emmer, can we go go to Michigan? We gonna go to Michigan. Do 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 do. And then Chris Bosch and I'm going to Georgia Tech anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> and I'm like, dude, like, what? 
Yeah, man, but you um, recruit, you go recruit me to go here. You don't even go yeah, here. He didn't even go there. Yeah, man, but um, it was it was it was a crazy it was a, that was a crazy summer, man. But playing in the, the first annual Jordan Classic was dope. Um, and then you know, obviously being a McDonald's on American, that's like the highest you can achieve in the high school level, man. It was it was a cool experience, man. We had a lot of guys: Amari Stoudemire, Chris Boss, JJ Riddick, um, Mello. Um, I mean, we had a lot of guys, man. We had a lot of Iguodala. No, nah, Iguodala played in the Jordan game. He didn't play. He wouldn't even make down on American. Yeah. Um, Sean May, Rashawn McKay. I mean, that was that was a crazy that was a crazy class, bro. I didn't go live, bro. That was a crazy class, man. So the cream of the crop, you in high school, you about to transition to college now. Um, what school did you end up going to, and how this how from freshman to senior year? Explain each year about your growth and evaluation, you know, ups and downs, highs and lows of what went uh, on college. Uh, so, so going to college, man, um, obviously been to McDonald's on American, so they was expecting, they just won a national championship. Merlin, Merlin just won a national championship. So mm -hmm. they, they was expect they was expecting big things from me going there. Um, So that summer, obviously we preparing, but that's when I, I, I was, like I said, when I was in high school, I was in, I was, it was, it was school and the basketball at home, school, basketball, home. So when I go to Merlin, man, it's everything, I'm open to everything now. You know, people start coming around, um, the nightlife, um, DC was crazy around that time, like 2002, DC was Talk crazy. The city. Oh my goodness, man. It was, it was, it, it was popping, bro. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, man. Um. But I, honestly, man, to, to keep it 100, man, I just I got caught in the whirlwind, bro. I got caught in, I got caught in the whirlwind. Um, I wasn't prepared for it. Um, I got more addicted to – I thought I thought I was living like a, a league because the way I was treated and what people were doing for me, I thought I was – it felt like the NBA-type status, you know, but m without me being an NBA. Um, Not the money. So – yeah, right, exactly. But man, I can, I can, I can, I can go places, man. I can do things, man. And it was just, it was a dope experience. Um, uh, yeah, man, I got caught in the world, man. I stopped. I wasn't as hungry as I once was in high school. Um, I just wasn't as dedicated as I was. I, I want, I wanted, I still wanted the NBA. I still wanted that dream and that lifestyle. Um, but I wasn't. I didn't put the work in to achieve that. So. Uh, my freshman year was it was okay. My freshman year was okay, but people was like, "Okay, he's a freshman. He's a learning curve." Um, and I played okay. I mean, not not compared. If, if people was like judging me or comparing me, then they was like, "Well, he underachieved." Then my sophomore year was like an up and down type of year, um, but I, I did really well in the ACC tournament. Uh, we won the championship two thousand four. I played really well that tournament, and people was like, "Okay, bet he found his groove going to his junior year is on." So it was just like for me, man. Throughout my, I can just sum it up, man. Throughout my college career, it was just like up and down roller coaster. I, I tell people all the time. So I tell people my college career was average compared to any other players in regards to college. But people was expecting this great thing because of me being the McDonald's on American, me being the Matha, um, me being who I was. It was expecting a lot, and I was expecting a lot for myself. But I wasn't willing to put the work in to achieve that stuff. Um. And then, like I said, just getting caught up in the, in the streets, man, and the girls and the alcohol and the drinking and the partying. I wanted that more than I wanted that more than being uh, a great basketball player. So I tell people all the time, man, I wanted to party and, and, and do all this here, and basketball was like here. You know what I mean? And if you want to be great, man, you're going to do whatever it takes to, to accomplish that. And I, wasn't, I, I didn't put that work in. So that's, that's what my college career didn't turn out the way I expected it to, and, and as well as Everybody else expected it too. So I had more, I had higher expectations on myself than everybody else did on me. So, um, but I just didn't put that work in, you know, just getting caught up in the nightlife, man. And just, it's just when you do that stuff and you lose focus, man, you get caught up in all type of drama and unnecessary stuff that end up interfering with your own accord pro uh, process. So, so right there, bro. So when I look at you and I see that you got, you played with LeBron, um, Carmelo. Kevin Durant, all these heavy hitters. I look at them at the league, and I'm pretty sure people are gonna look at you that you played against these people and you actually held your own. You was on the same level as these guys. So 
the the question would be like, what do you feel went wrong? What made what, what things went left? What's the path that made you go the other direction? Um, like I said, man, just just not being as dedicated, not being as hungry as those guys. You know, LeBron's still in the league. What LeBron is still in the league because of the dedication he has. But he, he invests a million dollars in his body every summer. I mean, so. It's a business. I didn't. I didn't look at it like that. I was more so like I wanted to be in the streets. I wanted to be in the clubs. I wanted to party with the girls. I wanted to party. I wanted to do all this different stuff. I didn't. I didn't sacrifice or dedicate myself to the game that brought me that far. So that's that's why I'm not. It's not because of my skills. I know I had the skills. I mean, I, yeah. it was it was proven. You know, I talked to teams. I talked to NBA guys or scouts or GMs right now, man. And they tell me, they tell me the story about when they was looking at me and stuff like that. And they was like, you know disappointed or not disappointed but they was expecting more and yeah. um but i just like i said i just didn't put the work in man you know i know i know i could have played in the league i know i know i could have but like i said man, i wanted the party life more at that time so yeah bad bad so when you get out when you get out of college and um that career is over what what happens next what transpires next what do you looking to do next as far as, you know, continuing your career and then some um, of the, the things that, what's the, what's the thing that got you to the next level? So it was crazy, bro. What's crazy is I, so Portsmouth is like the, like, okay, you got Portsmouth and you got the uh, Chicago NBA, um, NBA combine. Yeah. So Portsmouth yeah. is like for the seniors, for all the seniors that's the, and the NBA coaches come there. It's like a, a big tournament. I didn't even get invited. I didn't get invited to that tournament because I didn't have a great senior year or nothing like that. Yeah. Um, so I literally had to call them. I had to make calls, bro. I had to call them. I had to call people that also to try to get me in. Um, they like, you know, we don't have no room. I'm like, man, I don't care what position you put me. At. I just, I just want to just get me there. Um, and I've been trained. I love, I love school. Um, second semester just to focus on the next level. Um, so I started training heavy, man. I said, man, if I get an opportunity, I'm going to kill it. And I was calling the port. I was calling the head. I said, "Hey, I'm trying to get in." I said, "Hey, I'm trying to get in." They're like, "Man, no, you know, we're in a room. I'm like, I don't care any position you put me in. Just give me the opportunity. If something opens up, I'll let you know." So I'm calling. I'm calling the favorites, man. Long story short, the guy calling back is like, "Hey, um, a kid from Richmond just got hurt in the tournament, so you can take his spot." I was like, "Man, I went down there, bro. <clears throat> I said I'm gonna kill everybody they put in front of me just to prove a point because I want to show." The NBA guys that I really can play. Long story, man. I, um, I end up averaging like thirteen and nine, and I go and NBA coaches and teams are talking like, man, why was he doing all this at Maryland and this and the third? Um, but long story short, man, I end up uh, they they going from being not being drafted to like the late second round, and for me that was huge because I went from having a mediocre to me mediocre college career to put myself in a position to get drafted. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but then, man, like I said, man, I got caught in this situation in college, man. I got in some trouble. I had to go to court like two days before the draft. So NBA teams are calling my agent like crazy. I had to go to court two days before the draft, bro. Um, play, play guilty, man. And all them teams that was calling, stop calling. So all, <laughs> I worked my butt off so hard to get to a yeah. position, bro. And because of stuff I did off the court, affected my on the court situation um so i lost i lost i lost out a lot of money man i lost a lot of opportunities but the the one team that did say they, they was going to still consider me was the lakers um oh wow yes yeah, the yeah, so uh so we was getting offers from overseas and stuff like that like some good money too i mean looking back at it now i'm like man i should have took that <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> but uh but but me and my agent were like we were like yo nba is nba nba that's what we, nba nba I'm, I'm, I'm turning down six figure deals overseas and everything um long story short i get drafted by the lakers the d-league team i got drafted by the d-league team mm. um and i ended up missing like the last cut so i ended up going to like the cba um, cause I still would be in the States and that way teams could still see me. Um, and teams were coming to the games, like some teams come to the games. Um, so I ended up getting rookie of the year there and I went, worked out for the 76ers that summer and I went to Cleveland's mini camp. I killed that. But with them, their roster spot was done had like two spots. It was, it was crazy, man. Then I ended up going over to South Korea, made some really good money over there. Um, and then I ended up going over to Spain and 
and on and on, man. I went to a lot of different places, Spain, Uruguay, Ukraine, Turkey, Greece, um, Lithuania. Mm. Um, I went all I went all over the places, man. But you know what's so crazy what's though, that? bro? I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to go over to like Asia, man, for some good money too. But yeah. it was like they, I signed. I was about to sign a contract and everything. I had the contract and everything. Good money. I'm like that. Boom. Oh man, it's good. It's a wrap. Right when, I, right when I'm about to sign the contract, man, my people's get a call. It's like yo, it's a new owner over there, and the team said they're not gonna take you because of the trouble you got in the college. I'm like yo. Yeah. It's like you can't catch um, a break. It's like I'm like you get like a bad mark off your record, man. I'm like, bro. I'm like, man, that's why I emphasize the kids now, bro. I'm like, man, keep your nose clean because what you do can affect everything you work so hard for, bro. I lost a lot of money and a lot of opportunities because of off the court stuff. A lot of opportunities, man. Um, and it just, it just, it's. People don't understand that. That's why I got my company now called Think First. I'm, I'm, I'm it's mostly, it's mostly I. My focus was athletes, but it contains to anybody, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, get to, you get yourself into a situation, you get in trouble, man. But that stuff can affect you and follow you for the rest of your life. So people really need to be conscious of that, especially athletes, man. Especially nowadays, everything's social media. Everything is retweeted. Everything is, like, over, over, over again. So, therefore, it's, it's, you put yourself in a position where teams or corporations or businesses, like, man, I can't deal with this dude. He's all over the Internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he's yeah. getting retweeted. Like, so, so it's it's – it's bigger than that, man. So I just want to shout to athletes, man. They just gotta keep your nose clean, man, and stay focused. And man, just focus on the grind, bro. This it ain't easy. We get put in a situation where we 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 under a, a, a microscope, but that's what comes with the territory. You know, what I mean, that's what comes with it, man. People people gotta understand that. You know, I don't think a lot of kids understand. I mean, kids, man. When I was in school, I was a kid, bro, I didn't understand nothing. I didn't I didn't know anything. I, I'm just my whole my whole mindset when I was at college, bro, which was crazy. I thought I was like everybody else. I can go out here, I can go party, I can go drink, I can do everything because I'm just like you. We the, we the, we the same we're person. Same. We, we, we're the same yeah. person. That, that's, yeah. how I, that's how I looked at things, bro. I'm, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm, I'm just the same. But, man, all actuality, you're not. You, you, you're under a microscope. You can't go out here and do what such and such does. Mm. You know what I mean? Le LeBron can't go out here and do what another person does. Like, he, it's, right. it, he can't do it because his right. stuff is – he's under a microscope and he's going to get looked at somewhere in a different light. So that's why I try to like teach kids now, man. Teach these kids in college, man, that have hopes and dreams of trying to move on to the next level. You're a business. So if I'm if I'm a if I'm a businessman, I'm trying to invest money. I'm not gonna invest money in a in a situation that is like I don't know. Like we'll, we'll get caught up in a situation. So it's just it's unfair, man. Kind it's unfair. I believe it's unfair, but it is what it is. So it's but like, like with, you know, it comes yeah, with the territory. With, with much um, what's that phrase? It says um. Was much is given, much is, much is yeah, required. Of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. But well, like you, you already, you, you the big man on campus. You doing everything that you want to do. You gonna have to have a responsibility to uphold yourself, not like the average person. Of course, but but you, but you're a kid, bro. You don't understand. You trying to have fun. You trying to enjoy life, man. Which is which you should be, but you can't. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it, 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 you you can't, bro. I can't go out here. I'm in college. I'm a top player in college. I'm gonna go out here and get fried and just do whatever I want to do. Just act buck wild. And it's not gonna happen because nowadays everything is Instagram, everything is pictures, Snapchats, videos, and now you're on ESPN. Now teams are looking like, yo, this dude is a party animal, and he's just good. he could have been just out suddenly bring this, a big win. So it's just it's messed it's, up. It's, it's, it is what it is, bro. It comes with the it comes it comes with it. It comes with it. You know. I feel you. All right, bro. So last thing before I, you know we get off this interview, um. You got your book, you know, Never Satisfied, um, your podcast. Where can the followers find you on social media? How can we also get a copy of your book? Um, so I'm on social media, man, Travis underscore Garrison, number four. I'm on Twitter, um, Travis Garrison. You can follow me there, TG Think First on Twitter. Um, I'm on Facebook, too. Um, I have my website. You can find everything, my Think First apparel, shirts, hoodies, hats, um, I have a book, Never Satisfied. That was the first book I written, which is in 2011. Um, another book, The Gamble. Um, I've written that. I think I published that 2015. And my latest one, which was uh, done 2020, was The Crossover, A Bridge from the Court to Life. And um, you can find all that on um, www.think-first.net. So everything is on my website, man. My whole mission statement, everything I'm trying to do. Um, I'm just trying to help these youngest, man. 
uh, on their journey through our life. That's my whole mission. That's my whole purpose. Every all the pain that I felt and I went through, I'm trying to give it and and show these kids, man, that they don't have to live their life the same way I did, or they're trying to accomplish something, man. They have to go in with a different mindset. Like I said, kids are kids. They don't understand. Right. But it's, it's it's up to people like me and other men to come back and help these kids throughout their journey. So what about the podcast? Can tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. So I have the Go Terms with Travis Garrison. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. Um, it's on it's streaming live on Twitter at um, the Field of 68 Networks. Um, it's pretty much, I just talked to a lot of Merlin players, coaches, uh, former players, current players. Um, and we just talk about, you know, uh, uh, the team. And then we talk about where they're at right now. And then, you know, they experience at Merlin. Dope, dope. So that's uh, Travis Garrison um, on Spotify and also the, the website. Say it one more time and put that into the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so so <clears throat> the website is www.think-first.net. And my um, podcast is Go Turpins with Travis Garrison. Gotcha. So that's for all the followers who did catch that. I'm going to make sure to put that into the subscription box. But anything else, bro, that you want to leave us with before we go off, get off the interview? Whatever you want to do in life, any dreams or goals you may have, go after with everything you have. Give it all. Give it to y'all. I don't care. I mean, fear comes with it. I mean, guys, to like being scared to take that leap. But man, if you take that leap and you give everything you have, you won't have no regrets. So that's what I say. Hey, big time. <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you for joining the audience. Thank you, bro, for joining this up uh, interview with me, man. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna make sure to get it to you ASAP. Uh, but anything else that you want to say? Is that it? That's it, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. Um, I appreciate everything that you're doing, man. Keep going. I remember we, you talked a few years ago, man, just about your grind and everything you're trying to do on the court. Um, yeah. Man, you've been doing I've been watching you, man. Just So just keep going, man. Everything you're trying to do, I know you can get it accomplished. You know, just keep believing, man, and keep working. Yes, sir. I got you, bro. That's a wrap, but any anybody else um, want to check out any more videos, tune into our uh, subscribe show every Sunday at the Pull Up Bo Basketball Podcast. But thanks for Travis for coming in. With that being said, pull up a seat, pull up a chair, pull up. Peace. Peace. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir.